Hi guys. It is quickly turning into a hot, sweltering summer day here in early May. Uh, in the end times in paradise in Garfield, Texas on this uh, soon to be sizzling Tuesday, May 8th. 2017 I believe but I think over there in Phoenix I think it's about 105 degrees so I'm not going to complain but I really uh, need to get out there and mow my goddamn lawn crank up this gas sucking lawnmower to mow down this uh, Amazon forest uh, growing out in my yard uh, before the weather gets so hot I will die of heat stroke trying to be a doomsday homeowner and eco-Nazi. Uh, so let me dive right in to uh, this week's edition of my Doomsday Tuesday headlines as my We Are So Fuck sign goes blowing away. And uh, so we are going to do what I do every Tuesday and beginning in a few days will be doing every day on my new channel Collapse Chronicles and that is opening up the pages of the mainstream media uh, to see how to, for our more daily morning walk through the book of Revelation taking Al Gore's advice and I've got to put my little dog little dog I'm sorry you've got to go over here and uh, we got to uh, Sancho Pons is not a fan of mowing the lawn. But anyway, so before I get out there lawn mowing, let's take a walk through the book of Revelation, starting off with this story. <clears throat> How mowing your lawn less could help save the bees. If you don't mow your grass for a couple of weeks, it turns out you might be doing a favor for the environment. New research by the USDA Forest Service and partners funded by the National Science Foundation found that mowing your lawn less frequently can significantly improve pollinator habitat. And, uh, oh yes. Now we have lost the bullshit detector button. I uh, hope it's just the batteries, but uh, the no shit Sherlock button is heading. So from that no shit Sherlock story, many versions of this story on the mainstream media past couple of days. <clears throat> Yale experiment to reincarnate dead brains promises, quote, living hell for humans. A scientific experiment to reanimate dead brains could lead to humans enduring a quote, fate worse than death, close quote, an ethics lecturer has learned. And this would be ethics le philosophy lecturer Benjamin Curtis looking at this story that I mentioned uh, and, and maybe in this rant last week I believe it was where these Yale uh, mad scientists have reanimated brains from these factory farmed pigs I guess uh, anyway reanimated brains that had been previously previously dead take it away ethics and philosophy lecturer Benjamin Curtis quote even if your conscious brain were kept alive after your body had died you would have to spend the foreseeable future as a disembodied brain in a bucket locked away inside your own mind without access to the sense that allow to the, I guess he means these senses that allow us to experience and interact with the world. 
in the best case scenario, you would be spending your life with only your thoughts for company. Hmm. With, with absolutely no contact to external reality, it might just be a living hell. Do you think so? That immortality would be tedious to end up in a disembodied human brain may well be to suffer a fate worse than death. All right. Now, uh, I don't know if you've heard, it is official as of about 20 minutes ago that Donald Trump is pulling out of the Iran nuclear deal. And so this is uh, the national interest, Mohammed Ayyub's uh, reading of this whole thing. Toward Armageddon, Israel, Iran, and the United States could end up in a war. No shit, Sherlock. This game of chicken can be very dangerous. Ha! Huh. As the confrontation between Israel and Iran is reaching very dangerous levels, the escalation seems to be driven by Israeli calculations that a major Israeli military confrontation with Iran will overcome any residual hesitation the U.S. administration may have or now may have had about reneging on the nuclear deal. Yes. Anyway. Uh, from that Armageddon to in the Middle East to the Armageddon I have been predicting for years. Yet to stay over in the national interest. Next to that story, we have this one. Why China's new missiles in the South China Sea should scare the Navy and the Air Force. No shit. The latest deployment of missiles is a massive provocation. There you go. China has deployed surface-to-air missiles and anti-ship cruise missiles on Fiery Cross Reef, Subi Reef, and blah, blah, blah. Um, that is in addition to China's recent installation of jamming equipment in the region, which is designed to disrupt communications and radar systems. <clears throat> the White House is threatening consequences for these Chinese actions. This is good old Sarah Huckabee Sanders. We are well aware of China's militarization of the South China Sea. There will be near-term and long-term consequences. No shit, Sherlock. Yes, called uh, World War Three. All right. Anyway, I guess my computer does not want to download the story, uh, but the headline says a lot. Pentagon video warns of, quote, unavoidable dystopian future for the world's biggest cities. No shit, Sherlock. Yes, thank you, uh, Pentagon. For that, uh, it's too bad we cannot see your your new video here on Humpty Dumpty Tribe. Okay, what is? Uh, I need to interview this guy, Umer Hawk. Why we are understanding? Why I'm sorry. Why we are underestimating American collapse? the strange new pathologies of the world's first rich, failed state. No shit, 
We'll get back to this. Uh, Fiesta, we need to put Umer H A Q U E on the list. Okay, many, many, many versions of this story about this volcano, which I, over there in Hawaii, which I think is now eating 21 homes. But I particularly liked uh, like this story. Watch lava slowly engulf a poor abandoned car sitting in the path of Hawaiian volcano. Hmm, do you think so? Many residents have been forced from their homes as the lava slowly poured from the gap and new footage has emerged of one unfortunate abandoned car being swallowed up gives you a good idea of a worst case scenario. Yes, uh, this would be a Ford Mustang sitting helplessly on the side of the road being consumed by the liquid rock flowing through a fence before crossing the residential road. It's likely the car's owner was long gone by the time the lava reached his home and vehicle. No shit, Sherlock. Okay, from volcanoes to, uh, I guess this is going to be part of my uh, final climate change meltdown roundup rant tomorrow, anybody not understanding what signs of the end times looks like. Nearly 200 horses found dead on Navajo land in drought hit Arizona. The animals lie in neat circles around the pond that was supposed to sustain them as spring temperatures rose and water became harder to find. Instead, they collapsed in the mud, exhausted, and weakened from drought. No shit, Sherlock. Quoting one of these uh, Navajos, uh, these horses were not shot or maliciously killed. These animals were searching for water to stay alive. No shit, Sherlock. Okay. What is going on with our friends in the NSA? Spy agency NSA triples the collection of U.S. phone records. No shit, Sherlock. The U.S. National Security Agency collected 534 million uh, records of phone calls and te text messages of Americans last year, more than triple the amount gathered in 2016. A U.S. intelligence ag agency report released on Friday said uh, the sharp increase from 151 million uh, records occurred during the second full year of a new surveillance system established at the spy agency after U.S. lawmakers passed a law that sought to limit its ability to collect such records in bulk. No shit, Sherlock. Okay, I absolutely, this, this is probably going to have to be the title of this rant. NRA names Oliver North, known for Reagan-era scandal, as new president. <laughs> the National Rifle Association on Monday named as its next president retired U.S. Marine Lieutenant Colonel Oliver North a conservative commentator best known for his central role 
in the 1980s Iran Contra affair. This is NRA Chief, Exe Chief Executive Wayne LaPierre. Hmm. Quote Oliver North is a legendary warrior for American freedom. In these times, I can think of no one better served, better suited to serve as our president. Oliver North being the new president of the National Rifle Association. If, uh, if there's anybody out there failing to see the sick, twisted humor in that quote from the uh, NRA, uh, I, you know, obviously I am, uh, we have a failure to communicate on Humpty Dumpty Tribe. Okay, what's going on in the great American university system? Weapons grade plutonium goes missing from U.S. University. A small amount, a small amount of radioactive weapons grade plutonium has gone missing from a university in Idaho. Hmm, Idaho S State University is what we're talking about. While the amount is too small to make a nuclear bomb, it could be used to make a dirty bomb to spread radio contamination. No shit, Sherlock. There you go. And uh, letting them, if you, while, uh, let's hear from Victor Drix from the Nuclear Regulatory Commission commenting on the theft of the weapons grade plutonium, quote, the NRC has very rigorous controls for the use and storage of radioactive materials as evidenced by this enforcement action, close quote, he said on the proposed fine of $8,500 against the university. There you go. What is going on? Not a good week for teenage girls. Let's start over there in India where we see today a second teenage girl has now been raped and set on fire in the same Indian state, police say. A 17-year-old girl in India was raped, sprayed with kerosene, and set on fire in the second such case in the country this week. The latest brutal incident occurred on Friday, the same day another teenage girl, a 16-year-old, was raped and burned to death in the same state. Fifteen people have been detained in connection with that case. But let's go from India to the shithole Lone Star State of Texas. Teenage girl killed seconds after taking off her seatbelt to take a selfie. The grieving parents of a teenager killed seconds after she took off her seatbelt to take a selfie are launching a campaign to convince people to keep their seatbelts on at all times. Kylie Mills, 16, was with three friends in a car in Texas heading out to a party when the vehicle crashed and rolled over, the other three teenagers who had their seat belts on survived. From the shithole state of Texas to the shithole country of Australia, Australia pledges cash to help save the endangered 
Koala. Australia unveiled on Monday a 34 million US dollar plan to help bring its koala population back from the brink of extinction following a rapid decline in the furry marsupials fortunes. Again, my uh, bullshit detector button. I'm hoping it's just the batteries. Uh, anyway, this is the Australian Koala Foundation estimates there may now be as few as 43,000 koalas left in the wild, down from a population believed to number more than 10 million prior to European settlement of the continent in 1788. Oh, shit. But uh, let's have a, uh, a few uh, stories from the shithole continent of Africa. I just shared as my quote of the day a, a quote from this book by Richard Manning against the grain talking about uh, the, the collapse of sub-Saharan Africa and uh, God damn it! Fucking computer! <sighs> Let me try to get it back. Oh, come on! My brand new, here we go, thank you. <clears throat> Armed bandits raid a village in northern Nigeria, killing at least 45 people. At least 45 people were killed after armed bandits attacked a village in northern Nigeria, officials said Sunday, the latest in a series of attacks in the country's rural areas. And again, anybody who does not understand why, uh, why, uh, Sub-Saharan Africa is the poster child of what the rest of this planet is going to look like as the planet collapses. Uh, I'm failing to communicate. In a, okay, as long as we're over there, no shit, Sherlock, African growth picks up, but debt a concern, says International Monetary Fund, growth across sub-Saharan Africa will rise to 3.4% this year from 2.8% in 2017, but in the poorest countries, debt is a major burden. <coughs> Do you think so? Uh, at the bottom end of the scale, lie 12 countries home to about a third of sub-Saharan Africa's population where last year per capita incomes declined, a trend that is likely to continue in most of them in 2018. No shit, Sherlock. There you go. Let's see, uh, I just mentioned in my, in my quote from Against the Grain about a mother celebrating when a leopard snatched her baby since uh, she had no food to feed her baby. She was relieved when a leopard ate her baby but I guess this uh, bereaved mother is not quite as hungry yet as that woman was. Man eating leopard on the loose after killing toddler tourist at Safari Park. A three-year-old boy was snatched from his horrified family and eaten by a leopard at a safari park in Uganda. Um, 
a anyway, uh, talking about uh, global tourism. This is one of the effects of global tourism. I'm going to mention a headline about global tourism in just a minute, but we're going to sort of wind up uh, this rant here in our own country. What state is this? Sounds like, no, it sounds like Texas, actually Wisconsin. We're going to go from man-eating leopards to man-eating cheeseburgers. Man has eaten 30,000 McDonald's Big Macs breaking world record. A Wisconsin man has eaten 30,000 McDonald's Big Macs and he has the receipts to prove it. This is Don Gorski has been eating Big Macs for more than 46 years and has set the record for the most Big Macs consumed in the Guinness Book of World Records. There you go. Uh, well, shit, where is this story? Uh, it is it is gone missing. Talking the, uh, I, I, I don't have time, though, but this is pretty much the title about this giant new dead zone that they have discovered uh, somewhere in the ocean, the newest dead zone. And the headline was, New is something like giant uh, dead zone discovered and eating cheeseburgers may be to blame. Uh, and anybody who does not understand the connection between a clueless fucking moron eating 30,000 cheeseburgers and a new dead zone the size of Florida and somewhere out in the ocean obviously you have not done your homework. Okay, and the rest of these stories, uh, I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to be covering in tomorrow's final, uh, final uh, climate change meltdown roundup rant. So I'm just going to read the headlines. It would really be nice if they would give me the headline of this story. I want to, many versions of this. I just liked uh, the one that Fiesta sent me. Global tourism's carbon footprint is four times bigger than thought. So I see CNN has dropped the, the redundant word previously. This will be, uh, we will talk about this more tomorrow. Just a few more headlines, just the way they rolled off the uh, ticker in the mainstream media. Outlook for vital southwestern U.S. river remains grim. <clears throat> no shit. Here is historic drought takes toll on South Africa's vineyards. Here is while the U.S. shivered, the rest of the world simmered in planet's third hottest April ever. How about a decade ago, climate experts were deeply worried. Now they are terrified. Oh shit, Sherlock. Hmm. How about poorer countries will see greater temperature swings as planet warms? How about record temperatures skyrocketing into triple digits in the southwest today? Greenhouse gas feedback loop discovered in fresh water lakes. Arctic Ocean deep in the grip of May temperature spike as beastly summer melt season is on the way. But we are going to wind up 
unfortunately my uh, bullshit detector I didn't realize my bullshit detector button uh, was broken <clears throat> switching to renewables will save millions of American lives <clears throat> anyway guys I have got to uh, wrap up this uh, week's Doomsday Tuesday headlines and crank up my gas sucking lawnmower to uh, mow the grass one more time hopefully I will not die of heat stroke and if I don't I will be back tomorrow with my final version of my climate change meltdown roundup right now smoke them if you got them we are so fucked bye guys